the number of available homes to rent in the UK has fallen by a third in the last 18 months alone. This is colossal. That's according to the property site Zoopla. While, meanwhile, rental prices have seen a 20% increase in the last three years alone. Well, Labour MP Diane Abbott is calling on the government to encourage more responsible private landlords. And she joins us now. Hmm. It's a lovely idea, isn't it, to say we need more responsible private landlords. Can I be brutal and say, what's the motivation for them? Well... You've got, <laughs> you've got landlords that... Uh, you might have big-scale property magnates. That's who we always visualise, don't we, as landlords? But an awful lot of landlords, I've got friends who are in this position, are renting out a second property. Maybe they've got married and they've decided to keep one as a sort of pension for the future and live in the other. And currently, two of them at least, their mortgage now d is double the rent they're getting. So they're already paying over the odds for having that and they can't make ends meet anyway. Now, no one's going to cry for a landlord with a property, are they? But it is quite tough for some landlords as well. So how could they just be even more generous with their rent? Well, first of all, let me say it's great to be on a breakfast television programme. Years ago, I worked on the old TVAM, which you may yes. remember. Yeah. And this is a lot more glamorous. Um, <laughs> well, you look very glamorous <laughs> on it. What did you do on TVAM? <laughs> I was a talk? journalist. I was oh, a journalist. Yeah. Yeah. I also did a little bit on camera. Because at okay. TBM, everybody had to do everything because yeah. there was hardly any staff. Well, welcome back to your <laughs> old <laughs> metier. Yeah, OK, exactly. well, the question stands. Um, Landlord. What's the, land, what, what's the answer to what? It's a well, interesting scenario. as you've said, rents are stratospheric. And one of the problems about stratospheric rents is that younger people, like a lot of your colleagues here, they're never going to be able to afford to buy because every mm. penny is going on rent. With landlords, we want to encourage good landlords, but we want to bear down on bad landlords. I'm sure your friends... So what's a bad landlord? A bad landlord is somebody that, first of all, uses the no-fault eviction to get you out, and a bad landlord is, is someone that puts up the rent every six months, every three months, and that is what is causing renters so many problems. There's no certainty, cos bad landlords just want to exploit the market. Isn't there a bill going through already, though, to deal with the uh, no-beef uh, eviction, Section 21? I thought that was coming through this year. Well, the government has said that, but there's no sign of it. It's, it's not down for debate in Parliament. If, you know, a Labour government would put an end to no fault ev evictions. Is it true, talking about bad landlords, it, how much truth is there in this anecdotal uh, reporting that some landlords actually charge potential tenants just to look around the property because yes. the demand is so high um, they feel that they can? Is that true? They are now charging just to look at a property. Um, some of them are charging a relatively small amount, £30, which, you know, but some of them are charging hundreds of pounds. Well, Where's the evidence for that? Because yeah. our, our journalists, uh, who you used to be one of in Breakfast <laughs> Television, did a lot of digging on this, because it's pretty shocking. You know, we all agree with that. And they could only find one or two anecdotal cases of sort of <clears throat> five or ten pounds. Where are you getting your information that this is a widespread problem? And it's actually illegal to do that. So the law since 2020 has said that you cannot do that. So what we're doing here is, is saying that, that people need to be cracked down on. And where's your evidence for it? It's anecdotal. There's yeah. no sort of survey evidence. But a lot of estate agents are saying that. And it, it, as you say, it's illegal and it needs to be cracked down on. One of the things the Labour government would do is bring in a renter's charter. And one of the things that would say that in no circumstances can landlords charge just to view a property. Okay. Well, there's already a law against it, so they don't need to bring it in. So there's no... There, there is a law against that happening. Well, it doesn't seem to be biting, does it? Because you, you hear too much anecdotal evidence, certainly in London, of people charging... Well, I wonder view. if the reason why it's not biting is because people are desperate. So well, they might know mm. it's illegal, they might well not know it's illegal. No, it's illegal, I'm telling you, if anybody tries to charge you that. And I'd be interested to know the names of the estate agents that you say are charging that, because we're going to look into that. But no, it's illegal, if you're going to look at a property, you shouldn't be charged for it. But I wonder if the desperation comes, because there's so many people looking for the same properties, affordable properties, that they end up wanting to get any edge 
to get in there first to look, and that allows unscrupulous people to charge for viewing. That's true. You know, one in five people in London are in rented property. Mm. The competition for these properties is appalling. Mm. And as I said, it, the rents are so high, people cannot save to put a deposit down to buy property. Right. But the pressure on properties, the pressure on properties comes from a lack of availability of properties. And one of the things you're also, get, or you're also questioning is the fact that a lot of landlords, maybe good landlords, are now, because they can no longer offset their profit against their own tax burden and their own mortgage costs, are being put out of the market. So, really, you know, putting more pressure on renting is going to cause fewer properties. What's the solution? A lot of the pressure mm -hmm. on prices has to do with the fact that people who years ago would be in social housing, mm. council flats or housing station property, can no longer do that. And one of the things that Labour would do is put up the numbers of social housing flats. Our mantra will be council housing, council housing, council housing. We're hoping to build 150,000 council housing association flats, right. and that would take the pressure off the private sector. Now, you will know from your days <coughs> working on breakfast television that time is always tight, <laughs> and there are two more things we want quickly to talk to you about. One is whether you think, whether you know, if Jeremy Corbyn's going to be standing as an independent, having been dumped, basically, by Labour. We'll come to that. But there was a very interesting interview, I don't know if you saw it or heard about it, from, by Nicola Surgeon yesterday on, on one of the weekend uh, talk shows, political talk shows, where she said that one of the factors in her decision to, to resign was just the endless abuse that she got on Twitter, um, online. I mean, uh, ludicrous rumours about her being gay, uh, and she's not, L ludicrous rumours about her having an affair with a French foreign minister. It just went on and on, she said, and, and a lot worse than that, a lot of straightforward abuse. And she said it was a factor, and, a, and it was going to be a great relief to her that she wouldn't come in for quite as much. You are one of the most abused politicians in this country online, I think the you? 2017 election, it yeah. nearly 50% of yeah. all abuse yeah. was Can, aimed directly it, at you. Does it get you down? It does get me down, but what I'm doing recently is I don't look at a lot of it. Good. My right. staff look at it, because it would be... <laughs> it would be too upsetting to read some of the abuse. I don't mind people disagreeing with me. No, no. I'm a professional No, politician. this is abuse. This is abuse. I've, I've got it written down. So, I've abuse. got some of the quotes here. I can't read them out. They're disgusting. I mean, yeah. they are absolutely disgusting. Yeah. Um, a, a lot of it's racist, isn't it? But it's not all racist. A lot of it's sexist. Yeah. A lot of it is just plain hatred. Yeah. Horrible. Um, really horrible. Would, it ever, would you ever get to the point, you think, where you, you might think, like Nicola Surgeon did, enough's enough, I'll go and plant some bulbs in the garden? No, I'm not going to do that, because then they will have won. But I've had young women work for me who say I would never run for Parliament because I couldn't take that type of really? abuse. Yeah. Now, nearly four years ago, the Labour Party was trying to encourage the nation to vote for Jeremy Corbyn to be Prime Minister. He was then leader of the Labour Party. Now he's been thrown out by the party. Um, it is extraordinary, isn't it, that we're now in a position where the Labour Party is asking the country to trust it again, that it's got its leader right. Do you think Jeremy Corbyn will stand as an independent? Well, you were a great friend and supporter of his, of course. I remain a good friend of his. And let me say, cos I've known him for over 40 years, Jeremy is not now and has never been an anti-Semite, whatever you think of his politics. It is extraordinary that we're just going to throw him out. I don't know whether he's going to run as an independent, but if he does, he'll win. He's been the MP for Islington North for 40 years, very hard-working local MP, and if he runs, he'll win. You'd back him to run as an independent, Oh, would you? I couldn't back him because I'm a Labour MP and we're not allowed to back independents. But personally, your personal feelings would be very much in support of him, wouldn't they? I've been a friend of Jeremy's, I'd yeah. say, for You say he's not years. an anti-Semite, uh, but, of course, th th his problem was that he was seen not to crack down on anti-Semitism within the party. That was the issue. Well, that was the issue, but, you know, Keir Starmer put a motion in front of the NEC to bar Jeremy as a candidate, but that motion said nothing about anti-Semitism. It said that because Jeremy had lost the 2019 election, he couldn't run. Well, really, if you stop people being MPs because they lose elections. Mm. Why is Ed Miliband still an MP? You personally 
are, are, are supporting Jeremy Corbyn. He's your friend. Um, does that mean that there's a conflict between supporting the current leader? No, I will always support the leader of the Labour Party. <laughs> okay, that's a, a little a little giggle there. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure Keir Starmer would take huge confidence in that in that endorsement, but lovely to speak to you this morning, guys. Thank you, darling.